Hey guys, how we doing? Time for another Rico GR3 video. This one, I'm gonna tell you five things I like and maybe a few things I'm not real thrilled with about the Rico GR3. Very few things I'm not thrilled with. I like most of the features on this camera. The, uh, the price, a little steep, but I think in the long run, given the durability of this camera and the way that it would be used, I have a feeling this is gonna last a long time. So I think it was well worth the investment. I did have to battle my, uh, my desire to go to the Ricoh GR2 to save a few hundred bucks. But you know, they're, they're, they're becoming not obsolete. They're just becoming, basically it's hard to get a new one. I don't even know if you can get a new one. I don't like to buy used gear. One reason for that is I know how I am with gear and I just don't trust the fact that I'm gonna get a camera used by somebody else that hasn't been dropped, banged, you know, their kids licked it, I don't know whatever the deal is, but I just like getting it new because I know when it comes out of the box, I'm the first one to touch it. The first picture is mine, unless it's been returned and they just didn't tell me and they sold it as new. But for the most part, uh, th that's my feeling on used gear. Lenses, same thing. The wear and tear on a lens, I like to be the one putting that wear and tear on there. So everything I buy pretty much is new. Now, I do have links below for you to buy all this stuff, so it does help support the page. So if you're gonna purchase any of this stuff, you know, maybe, maybe uh, you know, help me out there, purchase from one of the links below. That does help the channel. If you like all these videos coming out, I'm gonna keep turning these things out. So at least two or three a week. So hopefully you'll stick with it and, and, and they'll get good, they'll get better, whatever the case is. So again, let's get started. The Ricoh GR3, $899 new off Amazon. I doubt that price is gonna go down anytime soon until they release maybe a Ricoh GR4. I don't know that there's any plans for that. I'm very happy with a Ricoh GR3. I like the upgrades, I like the things they've done to it that you cannot get on the Ricoh GR or the GR2. And I guess if you're really cash strapped, then you know go for the GR or GR2, you're still gonna get a good camera. But I think if you're looking for an investment in the long run, something that 10 years from now is gonna be worthwhile, I, I think this camera is still gonna be worth it. Because unlike a DSLR, I'm not out using this every day, so the wear and tear isn't gonna be there that there is gonna be on my Canon that I'm out doing uh, paid shoots or anything like that, or just in general, if I'm out shooting with it, uh, it just gets a lot more use than this is gonna get, so therefore this should last longer. Okay, a few things I really like about it. The construction, it's made really well. When you pull it out of the box, it does not feel like a cheap plastic compact camera. This thing's solid. Uh, it, it has a little weight to it, it's got some girth to it. And, and I, I don't know, not girth, it's got some weight to it. it, it so I like that. Um, straight out of the box, if you have big hands or long fingers, you know, you, you, you gotta get used to it. So the first accessory I'm gonna talk about here before, and this is, I, I, this is not really one of the things, okay, it is one of the things I like, but I'm not gonna include it because it's not actually part of the camera. This little JJC thumb grip here. Um, I know a couple people have said they purchased this after seeing the video smart move because again when, you, when you're holding this um, there's there's a lot of controls back here that my thumb will knock out so you take this you just pop your hot shoe off you put this on there slides right in like that then you can hold it like this I've had this in three or four videos I know you guys have seen this but for those of you who haven't and then your thumb sits right there you walk around all day like this it's so comfortable there's no problem at all doing that another accessory again just to get to it we'll pop this sucker on uh, this is the camera People talk about putting this in their pocket. I'm not putting this in my pocket because it can come on and go off too easy. And when it does come on, you've got that popping out. It's like, I'm afraid that if it tries to pop out and there's not enough room, it's gonna get stuck halfway or something and maybe burn a motor, burn a hinge, burn something. I don't like that idea. So I'm not sticking this in my pocket anyway. It, it goes in my camera bag with all my other respected gear. This is the Ricoh GA1. This is a little lens hood, basically. It has an official name, and it's in the, I'll put it up on the screen. It's also in the listings, $49. And this just, you, you pop your ring off there that everybody complains about. I don't know why they complain about it. People have, like to complain. It clicks into place. And if you want to unclick it, you just pop it off there. So this thing clicks into place. It protects the lens. So whether it's on or off, you know, this is still there. And then you get a little 49 millimeter UV cover. I don't use UV covers on my Canon lenses, but for this I am because now what we've got here is a nice protective housing for that lens. So no matter how much you 
pop it on, pop it off. It's not going to suck a lot of dust in, especially if you're in the southwest state, something like that. So it's not going to suck a lot of dust in. It protects it maybe from the rain or elements if you happen to be out in the rain. I wouldn't be out in the rain, but maybe, you know, it's just moist. Whatever. So you've got that. I like that. With this, of course, you can also get a circular polarizer. You can get uh, ND filters. This does have a two-stop ND built in. One of the things I like. I'm getting way ahead of myself here. But um, you can get a 10-stop, 6-stop, something like that to be really effective. So you, you can 49 millimeter will screw in there. Now, it's an 18 millimeter lens, 28 millimeter equivalent to 35 millimeter, right? So when you put a lens on here, well, I'm sorry, when you put a filter on here, like a circular polarizer or something like that, you're going to have a bit of, it, it's going to show up on the fringes, right? What's that called? Defringing? I'm not sure. It's going to show up on the edges a little bit. So you're going to have to edit or you're going to have to crop a little bit. I don't mind that. It, it is just an issue. If you want to use your circular polarizer, you want to use an ND filter, it's just something you're going to have to deal with. Not a big deal because this thing puts out such great images that no matter how much you crop, it's still going to look very tack sharp. A lot of the photos that you're seeing in my street videos, those are cropped. I don't just, there are few, very few of them that are just straight shot. A lot of those are cropped. I, I should do a Lightroom tutorial on that. Not even a tutorial, just, just show you how I do it. Just so you get an idea that these are, everything I produce is not just directly out of the camera. I don't use JPEGs, I use RAW. Okay, that's it for the accessories. One, two, three items there plus the camera. Again, all these links in, my, in the description down below. Go check it out. So, let's get to what I like and a few things I would like to have seen different about the Ricoh GR3. The first thing I like, I've been talking about it in the last three videos, snap focus. Everybody talks about snap focus. Nobody shows you how to use snap focus. I've been all over the internet trying to figure it out. Everybody talks about what a great feature it is. I, I, there's bugs out here. I can't do this in my house, by the way. I don't have the right lighting. So now the guy's cutting the grass, the weed eater and all that. I've got bugs. I'm sorry. Just the way, you know, I'm, 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 I'm evolving. So it'll get there. Trust me. Anyway, snap focus. There's a couple ways you can use snap focus, and, and I was a bit mystified at first. Matter of fact, I did a, uh, the three, first three or four videos, or more I did, I didn't use snap focus because I didn't know how to use it. I didn't want to say I didn't know how to use it, but I didn't know how to use it. The way they tell you how to use it is, let's say you're in program mode, right? And you're just snapping. You, you, you have to press the shutter button to get your focus and your metering, and then you full press in order to get your shot, like any camera. However, if you skip the half press and go to full press, then you've got snap focus. It'll just, everything's in focus based on your settings. I don't like that because I'm a DSLR user, have been for about 10, 12 years now. I'm used to half pressing. I'll walk around just half pressing for the heck of it, just half pressing because I want something fidgety to do with my finger. I can't full press. If I do a full press, it's going like this, right? I mean, it's just, it's going to be out of, it's not going to, I, I just can't do it. I don't want to do it either because I don't want to have to guess if I'm doing it right or not doing it right. So what do we do? We go to step number two, the one that nobody tells you about. So the first thing you do is click your menu button. When you click your menu button, the first thing that comes up is focus. You click OK, it'll give you options. The first thing is your auto area focus. Uh, just scroll down and you'll find snap. After you click that, now you're in snap mode. Now your, your half press is not going to help you. It'll check the metering maybe, but it's really not going to help you. So basically. You are full pressing, but it's uh, you kind of bypass the half press, but for me it works because when you half press, normally it's focusing and all that. This won't focus, you get nothing. You have to go all the way down. So I'm still probably doing a two step, half press, full press when I'm doing this. So I'm not jerking it down like that. So it works really well like that. That's the way I use snap focus. I hope that was explained properly. I hope you understood what I was saying there. So there is two ways to use snap focus. The first way everybody tells you is the full press when you've got it set to program. And the reason you would do that is because if you know, you've know you got something very close up, you're out walking around, you want to take something from a long distance or whatever, you would just normally use the camera, use the shutter as you would, half press then full press. But by the same token, you also already have your snap preset, so you can just push it full down and, and bypass the focus. But like I said earlier, I don't know if it's bypassing or if I got that one right or not. So why not just focus on everything and take the shot? You know what I'm saying? That would be my way of doing it. Until I figured out you actually set the focus as snap, then you can't focus on anything. It, and my settings for snap, I think what I've decided to do is go one and a half meters, 
at F9, maybe even F11, F9, F11, with a maximum of 1600 or 3200 ISO, and you can set that in the camera. So here comes the lawn mowing guy, of course. I don't know if you can hear him or not. I'm using the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. I'll put that link in the description as well. And it's a shotgun mic. It should be picking me up more than it's picking up the guy using the lawnmower. I don't know, but a little bit of extra information in there for you. I'm just going to go ahead and talk and hope that it's picking me up more than it is him. Okay, I also have a very cool windscreen on the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. I'll get a shot of that and show you once again. It's like a little furry cat thing. It's not a not 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 a not a uh, what would you, not a long-haired cat. It looks like more like a short-haired cat, but you know it it, it works. Very inexpensive. I don't know, it was less than 20 bucks, something like that. I'll put that in the description below as well, so you can check that out. I guess I should do a video on that. Okay, the guy is done cutting grass, so I think it's a little easier to hear me now. So, of course he's not. Okay, number two. Snap focus was number one. Number two is the size, and I covered this kind of in the intro, but I'm gonna real quick go over it again. The size of this camera. I, I like it. As I, as I kind of showed in the video, as I walk around, I don't know, it's kind of almost like a way a lady will hold a purse or a satchel or, something, or maybe a guy will hold a purse. I don't know, whatever. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, walk around like this, just kind of do do do. Of course, I've got a GoPro on usually, but if you walk around like this and you just kind of, uh, what should I take? And you're just clicking because the guys, people beside, you'll see me do that a lot in the video. People beside, you're like, click, 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 and you get those shots, right? Or, I put my thumb up here, hold it like this, and I'll walk and I'll have it down beside me and I'll just be like, the hip shot kind of, and I'll point it up like this, right, at that angle, and then just kind of click, 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 what am I, you know, I'll look over here, you know, like like behind the back pass or whatever, I'll look over here and click, and um, you know, you, you, it's kind of hoping, like fishing, you know, you, you, sometimes you get them in the frame, sometimes not, usually I'll click it three times, and that way, not real fast, but I'll click it, click it, click it. Go on burst mode if you want, but I don't want 3,000 photos when I get home. It's bad enough to go through 300 that I take and I, and I get 100 out of that or whatever. Maybe really keepers would be about 10 or 15, if that, but uh, just, just to show on the video, I show everything that comes out that's not blurry. Most of them aren't, or they're duplicate. So that's one of the huge advantages of the Ricoh GR3 is the, the stealthy size of it. And again, plus, just not because you're trying to be stealthy, but Literally, if you're out with a family or you're out at Kings Island or wherever, an amusement park or something like that, you know, this thing, it, it, it's great. It's not like a big old DSLR hanging around your neck. You can put it in a, you know, in, in a purse and it, whatever you can put it in your pocket. But like I said that, that earlier, I, I'm not a pocket guy. And of course, I would pick the day that they're going to cut the grass to come out here and, and shoot the video. but. Give them a minute. And the other thing you can do with it based on the size, it really looks like a phone. If you don't have the coupler on there, you're like this, you're walking around, if you really wanted to be kind of a dork, you could, hey, hello, hello, yeah, click, 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 hello, yeah, click. I mean, I don't know, that would be kind of, probably, <laughs> that'd be a little weird. The third thing I like about this camera, none of this would be relevant if it was not an APS-C sensor. That's basically the same size sensor you're gonna have in your DSLR, in your Canon, in your Nikon, that sort of thing. Most people don't think about their sensor size, especially if you're kind of new to photography. APS-C sensor, and it's not just the sensor, it's the fact that these things put out crystal crispy, that's not a word, that's not a phrase. Sharp, tack, crispy, crispy again is not a photography word, I don't know why I keep saying crispy. Very clear photos. I love the photos. I'm amazed at the quality of photos that come out of this thing. And that's honestly, that probably should be number one, picture quality. So I don't know, but w w that's three things. These are the top five, not in any particular order, let's put it that way. Because if, if you put out, if your camera puts out crappy images, you've got no hope. Everybody tells you your camera takes great photos. Well, no, you take great photos because you can take us, you can give two people a camera and give them a subject and they'll both take a different picture. Whether they're professional photographers, whether one's an amateur, one's a professional, whether both are amateurs, you give two people the same camera, same location, same spot, say take this picture, and they'll come out with different pictures. The subject will be down here, up here, you know, crooked, cockeyed, whatever the case is. So the camera does not take the photo, you take the photo, 
and the camera is your vehicle for your expression. However, if you've got a crappy vehicle, then it's only gonna be as good as what it can put out. I like that. Simple, stupid, that's it. APS-C sensor, it's a great sensor. You can't put a full frame sensor in here, so APS-C is it. And it's also 24 megapixels, so the megapixels are really somewhat irrelevant. You can go back to a, a Ricoh, or I'm sorry, you can go back to the, uh, the Ricoh GR, and it's maybe, what, an 18 or a 14, probably an 18 uh, megapixels or whatever. I mean, you put two pictures side by side. Yes, you could tell the difference if you really dug in, specifically looking for technical issues, but just on average, you're not gonna tell the difference. So, um, you know, megapixels, uh, it, but again, that's why I did upgrade though, because again, 24 compared to 16 or 14 or 18 or whatever the uh, Ricoh GR2 is, doesn't mean a lot right now, but in a few years, it could mean a lot. I don't know, we'll see. And the other thing with having such a nice sensor and such a sharp camera is if you do have to go up to 3200 or 6400 or god forbid 12,800 or whatever for your ISO it's going to handle it and it's going to handle it with no trouble at all I mean no trouble at all it's going to be very put it up against your DSLR I don't care what DSLR you have as long as it's not a necessarily a full frame put it up against any APS-C DSLR and you're gonna have the same quality if not better from your Rico and for 900 bucks You should have a little better quality shouldn't you? Okay, the next item I really love about this camera is the is the menu and the settings and again I haven't figured out how to line in my menu to the computer or whatever so I can I can show you a nice clear, you know uh, Imaging of the back and, and, and doing all that so I'm gonna hold off on that until I figure that out I've been scouring YouTube and cannot find anything on that. So if anybody has a link you can shoot me over That'd be awesome. I really would appreciate that but the settings on this thing. There's a lot of settings on here There's a huge menu on this thing. You really have to dig in and, and, and go through it but it does come down to a lot of the basic things, turning the beep off so it doesn't make noise when you take it, if, 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 unless, you, unless that doesn't bother you. Uh, I don't like the beep, I don't like people knowing I'm taking the picture. It's got a lot of function buttons on the back, at least, I don't know, two, three, something like that, uh, to get uh, to quick access, what you need. Uh, but the menu is, is, is pretty quick to get to. Once you kind of figure it out, it is easy to get to. It is difficult going back and forth from the Ricoh GR3 to the Canon EOS RP because I purchased both of them within a few weeks of each other. So I'm learning both of them as I go. And so you get used to the menu button, something as simple as a menu button being in one location. And you keep clicking and then, okay, let's see, it's here. Now it's over here, now it's here. So when you go between brands, of course, that makes it a little difficult. It has nothing to do with this video and nothing to do with this camera because the camera itself has a great menu, the settings are very easy, and you can get to them without any trouble at all and really customize this thing. You know, you can set your, uh, to, to where your, your shutter speed only goes so low so you don't have to worry about it dropping down to 30th of a second or below and getting a blurry photo of somebody walking. You can also set it to where the ISO tops out, maybe at 1600, 3200, uh, 6400, whatever you want so that you're not taking a 12,800 um, you know, ISO photo and, and with nothing but grain. If you're doing some sort of uh, cool artsy black and white, that's no problem. But anyway, it allows you to do all that stuff. And there's some great videos out there on YouTube about how to set up your camera. So I'd go check those out. And I believe two of them that really come to mind, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel Street Life. If you haven't seen the, his videos, look him up, Samuel Street Life. Also, I don't know, I, I forget his name, uh, Kwai somebody, Kawi, I'll put that up there as well. I'm also going to do a video here very soon. I'm sorry I keep getting off the beaten path, but I'm also going to do a video very soon on some really cool YouTube photographers that you should be checking out. I'm not talking about the, the obvious guys like Thomas Heaton, who's awesome, uh, or Samuel Street Life, who's awesome as well. I'm talking about guys like, uh, I don't know, James Red. I don't know if you ever heard of that guy. Uh, James Red with, with two Ds. Um, really good photographer. He, he's out of Utah. He's got some really cool stuff that he does. Uh, check him out. And uh, there's a few others that, that I'll get to. I think I'll do a video on that. But anyway, if you want some uh, new stimulation, check out James Red. So another thing I really like about the Ricoh GR3 is macro mode. Macro mode is something I've never really used on my other cameras or my other lenses. I never went out and purchased a lens just because of macro mode never really had a big calling for it but it is cool fun to play with all you have to do on here is just push this up button on the on the circle there the dial push the up button it automatically goes to macro mode 
course you got to make sure you push it again to get out of macro mode when you're done but it's fun because you're walking along and boom macro mode now you can just start taking you know some, the bees shots or whatever so i'm going to get out and do some cool stuff it took me a little while to figure out how to even you know you the way you focus in macro mode is not through a focusing it's you if your subject's here you've got to kind of go in that's why this hood and this filter are perfect because you're not smashing these things up against your lens um, a, a flower or something like that with pollen that gets on the lens it's going to just get on the um, on the filter and you can wipe that down and you don't have to worry about dust and pollen getting sucked into the camera so another good thing about this uh, this this housing here this hood but um, so it's fun to use the, the macro mode it's cool check it out um, I, I haven't done a lot of it extensively but I probably will do a video on it and we'll have some fun with it so we'll, we'll see but it's there easy to use easy to get to why not check it out now, technically, the macro mode would be probably sixth or seventh on my list. I think I jumped ahead there one. Uh, macro mode is cool, but it's certainly not, you know, the number one reason I would buy any camera or even any lens or anything like that. I'm just not really into macro that much. I, I, I'm, I've been looking at it, though, so I think I'll be doing some, but right now I'm really not into that. So more important than macro mode, of course, would be touch shutter. Again, these are in no particular order because touch shutter uh, certainly might go up into the top one or two. I'm not sure. Uh, but with this one it's very easy because of course you can touch to focus or you can touch focus and shutter release all three of those so that's kind of cool you've seen me use that in some of my street videos you might have seen me use it uh, on some of the landscape stuff you don't have to have it but it's cool to have and especially if you're doing some some long exposure something like that and you don't want the camera movement so you you know you can you touch it'll focus and if you put it on the two second delay wait two seconds that gives the camera time to just just slightly settle from the touch the vibration take that shot it just helps be tack sharp again tack sharp camera but you can do things to help it be more sharp as opposed to less sharp so that's one of the things i really like about this my canon eos rp has touch shutter as well a lot of cameras have touch shutter now the newer cameras do so it, it's good that they have that in there not just the touch shutter but also of course the the touch controls i do not believe the rico gr2 has the ability to do the menu options and things like that by touching the screen. I don't know that it would change anything, make it worse or not, but for 900 bucks it should have touch menu and it does, touch screen. So I really like that. Okay, maybe another thing would be the highlight weighted mode. I did a video on highlight weighted mode and, and it, it's really hard to put that application into use in a instructive environment because it's really something you don't you, you wouldn't set and use it all day and you would only use it in certain situations so it's hard to really uh, show uh, but you know, because because what you're doing is when you take that shot the highlight weighted mode it's making sure nothing is blown out okay but everything else you could have stuff that's just black or really dark in shadow and you're looking at your screen you're like wow that's 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 underexposed but I do everything in Lightroom. I pull everything into Lightroom and make adjustments. So you slide those shadows up. I, I, I always, my basic setup in Lightroom is I take the highlights down 80%. I take the shadows up 80%. And at first it was a little strange, but it really does, especially outdoor landscape, it brings out a lot of detail, a lot more detail than you would think. Um, so that's how I kind of start with it. And then I might slide this uh, either slider up or back or whatever the case might be. So if my image in the camera is a little underexposed or overexposed, it's not that big a deal. Overexposed is worse because if you're blown out, you can't ever get those back. If your sky is blown out, and I noticed that a couple times in a couple of my street videos with the uh, Canon EOS RP, um, I have highlight weighted mode in there, but I didn't use it. For the most part, I don't have blowouts like that. In landscape situations, you can get blown out skies or maybe the water reflection, something like that. And so you just have, but, but it's a trial and error thing. You got to know when you look at it that it did expose for the highlights. So half your screen might be black and you've got the little bit of sky up there. And you, you're looking at it like, well, that's not going to come out. And you don't know. So you go ahead and you compensate for it in camera. 
but when you get back to Lightroom or Photoshop, whatever you're using, that's when you see, okay, I could have pulled that up and it wouldn't have been a problem. It's a trial and error thing. You just got to try it and, and see what errors you come up with. For those of you who do not use Lightroom, Photoshop, anything like that, and are looking at this camera to simply produce JPEGs and take those JPEGs, throw them into your phone, throw them up on Instagram, whatever the case might be, uh, Facebook, it's great for that. I don't do that, so I can't really speak to that, but this thing makes great JPEGs, and it, because I have, I have tested that, it does do, I mean, it, it, it's great. Um, and of course, you can still edit your JPEGs, but if you're gonna edit it all, you, you wanna go ahead and use RAW. It has, you know, in-camera developing options with it, um, not just the, the filters that you can use, the monochrome and the different uh, cinematic looks and things like that. I don't use any of that stuff. I just leave it on auto and shoot in raw. And if I want to do anything, like my moody green preset that I created, if you want to know about that, let me know. I can do a video on that as well. I'll throw that in sparingly. I'll throw some black and whites in, and I'll throw some traditional, just regular color shots because the Rico produces some great color. Uh, the reds are awesome out of the Rico GR3, whether it's RAW or JPEG. So in-camera developing, it's really cool. It's got the Wi-Fi. It's got all that stuff. And, and this is not a tutorial about how to use this camera or, or all the details about it. It's just that, that it's overall, there's really nothing about this camera that's, that's, that's a strong negative. I, I, I really can't find anything about it that's a negative. You either like a compact camera or you don't, so that's either a negative or a positive, and you would either purchase it or not purchase it. So if you purchase it, obviously you have no problem with a compact camera. Like I said earlier, it's a solid compact. It's not a plasticky feeling camera. And the other thing I really like is the, the sensor cleaning, because people have complained about past versions of the Ricoh, the Ricoh the 1, the Ricoh GR2, uh, they get dust built up in there. Some people said that's actually ruined their camera. Uh, this has the uh, ultrasonic cleaning sensor, sensor cleaning or whatever. Uh, it just very, the, the, the vibration, micro vibration that gets the dust off the sensor. Nobody's ever answered where that dust goes. There is no, you know, escape valve for it or anything. I don't know where that dust goes in there, but um, I guess it's so micro that maybe it just disappears into the ozone or something. I'm not really sure, uh, but they say that's a great thing. I did not own a Ricoh GR2, so I don't really know. I can't compare the two like that. The last thing that I'll, that I'll hit on in this video that is a very, very big plus with this camera is the three axis IBIS stabilization but the stabilization is great because I can guarantee you some of the street shots I've taken have been helped by that because you whip over and take a shot and this thing's moving boom that's why you want to go 320 or 400 if you're in the street because you got these kids on scooters or bicycles uh, motorcycle going by you just you know take it 320 to 400 shutter speed you're going to be able to get those and the fact that it's 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 also adding the stabilization um, you know if you're microscopically shaky then uh, it, it, it's going to take care of you on that. So that's a cool feature, of course, without question. Just another reason that it's $900, but it's something that is of value, so it, it's, it's worth it. Okay, I said there would be some negative things about the Ricoh GR3. They're petty negative things because they're all kind of fixable. One would be, everybody talks about the battery life. Okay, well, anytime I purchase a camera, if I'm going to keep the camera, right away I usually go online and purchase a charger with two batteries. It seems like there's always a manufacturer out there with a charger that, that takes two batteries. So you have the battery that came with the camera, you got two extra batteries. Usually the two extra batteries have a longer life than the battery that came with the camera, but you got three batteries. You keep those charged and rotated all the time. I do that with all my, with the GoPro, with the Ricoh GR3, with the Canon EOS RP. I rotate, usually I think all, all three of them I have three batteries for and I just keep rotating those. The battery life in this, without checking the the uh, the screen every time you take a photo, which, which drains a lot of the juice, the last three photo walks I did, seven, eight, and nine, were all really topped out at about 300 photos because I was out for about an hour and a half. I guess I get, what, 100 photos every half hour or something like that would be the average. And I showed about, uh, each video had about 100 photos in there. That's what's what came out. So some of them were pushing it. It probably shouldn't have even put in there, maybe a little blurry or whatever, but just to kind of give an idea of what I was doing. Photo walk number seven, the battery literally died on me and I didn't have the spare one in my pocket. So now, of course, as I walk around, and the batteries are very small, so it's very, and they're very thin, so no reason I shouldn't have had one in my pocket other than lack of experience. My cannons have, have never died because I have the battery grips with two batteries in them, and I'm never out that long, more than a couple hours, and, 
I think we'll probably do seven or eight hundred shots or something like that. So, um, but anyway, so you get about three hundred. That's not really bad. An hour and a half, something like that, two hours. And of course, you saw how much I was snap. I just snap, snap, snap. From what you guys saw, and I was still taking even more photos. So, um, about three hundred photos of sore, but, but just grab an extra battery and, and you're good to go on that. The other thing that again, I, if you want to call it a negative, the dials are a bit fidgety. Uh, okay, I take that back. All these dials are fine. The, the dial dial, rotating dial is a bit fidgety, but I don't even know, it's not that big a deal. Um, without this thumb grip, it would be a problem because again, without that thumb grip, my finger would be right here on the exposure compensation dial, uh, possibly hitting one of these buttons down here and it would be getting sweaty and sticky. I just, just, it, it uh, so um, the dials are a little small, but that's because I'm a big person and I'm used to big cameras and stuff like that. So it's really not a negative. I, you know, it's a boutique camera and, and, and that's, that's what it is. And that's, you know, you gotta have small dials with it. So really not a big issue. Not even sure I should bring it up. Maybe I'll even just cut this part out or just leave it in for the hell of it. And the only other negative I guess I'd have, and that's just a personal issue is, you know, I'm used to, you know, that sort of thing. And in the newer cameras even, you actually see what you get. What you see is what you get uh, out of your LCD viewfinder. And it, when on a very, very sunny day, that's great because you're seeing in there, there's no impaired vision. You see if it came out or not. You see your blacks, you see your whites, you see your in-between tones, things like that. And you know you got the shot. With this, again, I don't even bother looking at the, at the view screen after I take the shot because it's just, it's so, I mean, it's an LCD screen, it's just it's the way it is. Any camera's gonna be that way, and when you rely on it on a sunny day, you're gonna end up just all day long doing this, so there's no point. Once you get comfortable with the camera, you just, you know, because you can always go back and hit the, uh... are you not done cutting that grass yet? You must be paid by the hour. Okay, I mean, you can go back and review your images anytime you want, you know, go back and review a bulk of 10 or, or something like that. Or if you're experimenting with a new setting, you've just changed the setting, yeah, you want to do it, but just hit the, um, the review button and you can do that. I'm sure that cuts down on your, uh, or saves power for your battery, but also the last photo walk I did, number nine, I might have looked at the, uh, the, the screen maybe two or three times in the entire time I was shooting. I just did not pay attention. I did not want to look, screw it, just, there were probably, there were a couple experimental shots that I went, okay, did that get, okay, maybe I better, you know, change something. That was worth looking for, but just the generic walking around shooting, I mean, just every time. It takes the fun out. Get home and it's like opening up a package, put it in photo or put it in Photoshop or Lightroom and ooh, check that one out, check that one out. It's just it's it's like Christmas Day, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's just me though. What else do I not like about this camera? It wasn't free. I, I don't know. I had to pay for it. It's a great camera. I hope I've given you some information. I know I've rambled on here. I've gotten way off the beaten path. Hopefully it's helped you out a little bit. All I can say is if you're on the fence about this camera, go buy it. You can always return it. But you know, if you're on the fence about the GR2 versus the GR3, I think you're better off going with the GR3. I just think that the, the 2 is going to be a little outdated here in another few years. And again, if you're only using it for snapshots, and using it sparingly and not using it very much, but you just want one, then okay, the, the GR2 probably makes sense. But if you're gonna do out and go out and do any serious shooting, and if you're gonna, I mean, just, just, and if it's something, like I said, it's gonna last. It, I, I don't wanna knock any of the, um, you know, the Canons and, and Nikons, but their compact cameras feel like compact crap cameras, usually. They feel plasticky, they feel like they should have cost $100. And I was afraid of that when I got the Ricoh because I didn't get it, I bought it during COVID, I didn't get a chance to really go check it out and nobody had it locally or anything um, but I was really pleasantly surprised with it I would not send this thing back and even during COVID when I thought you know are we ever gonna be is are the cities ever gonna be open again are we gonna be able to walk down the streets are we gonna be able to get close enough to even take a picture I think even in video six um, you know our, our photo walk six I was like you know I, I can't imagine using the Rico out here because everybody's so far away everything's so not the case though. I mean, this thing takes great shots. You, my next step is to stop just snapping close-up shots and start planning out some shots, really using the light in the cities and things like that, having more expanded view shots and, and, and what have you. Those to me are really cool photos. Just to take the photos of people walking by you 
it's cool, something you need to do, something you do several times to get comfortable with, but it's not something I would do all the time every day. So when I do my next photo walk, which will be this week, I, it won't be just using Snap. It'll be setting some shots up, talking to more people, paying a little more attention to the scene, to the light, things like that. Now that I've got a better grasp on the camera, but you gotta use the camera to get a good grasp on it. So, you know, you've gotta go out and just say, okay, all I'm gonna do today is just take Snap focus. All I'm gonna do today is just focus and shoot. All I'm gonna do today is, you know, monochrome only. There's a different way to look at monochrome in the viewfinder than looking at color. Take, for instance, somebody, you've got a black building. You've got somebody in a dark red or a bright red shirt walking by. That's kind of a cool clash. But if it's black and white, it's just another shade of gray. And it may even blend into the wall and all you got is a floating head. Okay, that's cool, but it's not. It's cool when you first do it and everything. And you're gonna do it, but after you realize, well, that's kind of you got to go through them. you got to take all these shots first to get them out of your system. Barns. I went through a series of barns one summer where every barn I just, ooh, cool barn. Okay, and they were cool barns, and I got some cool shots, and it's great to practice your framing and all that stuff, and you get in. But after a while, a barn's a barn, you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a four-sided building. And no matter how cool they are, you've already taken your share of barns. You, you, you lose that thrill of stopping and taking barn photos all the time. So I go through phases like everybody, and now I guess my phase is really the street thing, and, and this has been a big reason for it. I will take my Canon out and do some street, but you know, it's like really this is the camera to take out and do street photography. If you do not have a Ricoh and you're doing street photography, you're fine. I mean, the Canons and Nikons, those are great for street. I, I'm not downplaying any of that. I'm just saying that, you know, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm digging this so you can see this whole video but I've been sitting here holding this thing like this right that's the way I walk down the street just click 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 and if you really if you really want to look um, uh, amateurs or you not amateurs but in a, in a good way like you want to look like a tourist or whatever then get the strap that goes around your neck and so this strap wouldn't be here but you it say it's hanging around your neck and then you just kind of like ah you know take that strap and just uh, click click oh, this camera is just just annoying the hell out of me click you know just just I'm, I'm, I'm holding an imaginary camera strap a little thin strap up here and it's just like oh it's sweaty on my neck click click oh and, and somebody can literally be walking right by you just ah click and, and they, they they're no way in their mind are they thinking you're taking a photo what they're seeing is a guy adjusting it uh, click click I just there's a million ways with this camera to do that you know but but, but you try to do that with your DSLR Ka -chink, ka -chink, ka -chink, ka -chink, ka -chink. Uh, it's just not going to work. This thing will work doing that. So very cool. Just another big advantage of the Ricoh GR3. So that's it, guys. We're going to leave it with that. Maybe I'll come up with uh, with another video on more reasons to like the Ricoh GR3. Those are the main things we've covered right there. But it's just an awesome camera. Use the links below. Get you one. Uh, don't forget the accessories, especially this little thumb grip here. If you don't get anything other than the thumb grip, get the thumb grip. Um, this is cool. I, I probably will buy the the, uh, the 21 millimeter wide angle um, just to go ahead and get their video reviews on there. So you have to have the coupler to do that. The lens is about 200 and some dollars. The coupler is 49 dollars. So yeah, you've got almost a $300 lens there for wide angle for the Ricoh. But it, it certainly could come in handy, especially in tight tight areas, tight little towns, or you know stuff like that. You know you want to get some nice. Uh, landscape shots or what have you so it, it could certainly come in handy so i'm going to go ahead and get it and, and do a review on it and use it in a few videos and see what we come up with so that's going to do it for our video today guys i really appreciate you tuning in checking it out make sure and tell a friend give a like give a thumbs up give a subscribe whatever you can do it helps out i really appreciate the community i love the comments i like the banter back and forth you guys can see if you ask me a question or even make a comment i'm going to go on and ramble on for a half hour uh, in the description thanking you for doing that but also trying to point something else out just, just the way it is so again thanks guys appreciate it hope this was worth it for you